Hey, my name is Ben Iverson and I'm a 2D animator. Today I want to show you inside of After Effects how to use cameras and 3D layers to give you a parallax effect. So let's have a look. So this is what we want to make today. So these are just 2D assets that are made in Illustrator that are just separated in depth and just got one camera movement through it. So there's only a few keyframes used to create all of this movement. So let's have a look how it's done. Cool, so we're here inside of After Effects and first thing we're gonna do is open a new composition. 920 by 1080 is fine, 24 frames perfect and eight seconds will do, we can change that if we need to. Uh, and I'm just gonna rename my composition to OOCC because that's where we'll put all of any effects and stuff we need to after that. So I'm gonna import some files that I've created in Illustrator already for my buildings. So I'm gonna double click in this project panel, import my parallax as a composition and retain files at layer sizes. Open. And what that's gonna do is gonna create a folder here with all my building layers in. I'm gonna rename that to my AI folder, because that's where my folders are. And then this one, I'm gonna rename scene one, city. And I'm just gonna create another folder called comps, just to put this in, because it's so much easier working when everything's tidy. I'm gonna grab this city comp and put it into my CC layer, and then double click, and it'll open this up. So if you can see at the minute, all my buildings and stuff are off to the side with my sky. So I'm gonna select them all on my line tool, go to composition and put them all in the middle so I can see what I'm working with. So to begin with, what I wanna do is just make all of my layers 3D because then I can move them in 3D space. If you see at the minute, I'll open the position of my building up, one of these buildings up. So this moves on the X axis, this number moves on the Y, but what I wanna do is I wanna put it further back in Z space. So if I press this little icon, uh, this little box below this icon here, it makes it a 3D layer, so it gives you a third number on the position. So I'll just press P again, and it'll show you here, it can move it back and forward in actual Z space. So I'm gonna make all of my layers 3D apart from my sky on the background, because I always want that to be at the back. So I'm gonna lock that. I'm gonna press this little shy guy here, and then this big shy guy here, and it'll hide it from my little window here, so I can't see it, I can't move it, I can't do anything with it, which is perfect for this situation. So what I wanna do first, so I'm just going to reverse my layers, uh, just so my foreground's on top for me, and um, my buildings are in order as well, just because it just helps how I want to approach these. There we go. So I'll start by putting my foreground in, um, but what I'm going to do, I'm just going to change the colour of the layers, just so it's a little bit easier to see. So I'm going to do my foreground's green, and I'll do my background cyan just so you can see them in the timeline, uh, in the in this little window that is a bit easy to see. So I'm gonna open up the position of all my foregrounds. And what I wanna do is I wanna bring them closer to the camera. So if I move it as a higher number, it goes back in the Z space. And if I do it as a minus number, it comes closer to the camera. So I'm gonna do minus 900. And then for this one, I'm gonna do minus 700 because I want a little bit of gap between each asset that I'm, create, uh, that I'm putting in space. And then all I want to do now is just move them around the screen just so they're lined up a little bit better. So I'll put one down here, one down here, and then this one in the middle. So that's my foreground. Maybe a little bit lower. There we go. So I can minimize these now. I can lock them all. And I want to do the same with these buildings. Starting off with the middle one, and that'll be at zero. And then I'm going to go up 200 increments again. There we go. And then all I'm gonna do now is just reposition them just around the composition so they look appealing. So obviously as they get further away, they get smaller, but what we can do with that if we need to, let's try and fill the space, just scale them up slightly, because these are done in Illustrator, they are vector, um, so they will not downgrade, they'll not pixelate, so I can scale this, this dude up as big as one. And you can see it is getting a bit pixelated, but all you need to do to fix that is click this little raster icon here and it goes to full quality again. But I don't want to obviously make my button that big. Um, so 150 should do. And then building four, I 
can probably put here, make that one a little bit bigger as well. So I'm just eyeballing these now, like there's no rhyme or reason to any of these. Just trying to make it fill the screen so I don't see much sky. And obviously I'm scaling these up quite a little bit on some of them. So I will probably have to click that little raster button on a few. But as they do go into the distance, you probably do want them to get a little bit, feel like they're getting a little bit smaller. But you just don't want them to disappear. And the last building, I'll stick here. I'll make this one quite big. So it looks like a big skyscraper. Probably move these foreground layers down a little bit so we can see a bit more of the buildings. Just move them over slightly. There we go, that feels a little bit more balanced. Move that one down a bit because we've seen a bit of white space. There we go. So these layers are in 3D space and to show that we can change our view. So at the minute this little icon here is having one view, but if we go into two views, this right one here stays your active camera, so that's what you're seeing in your composition. But this is your top view, and that shows you the depth of these layers. So that's minus 900, that one will be zero, and so on. So you can see they are actually laid in depth, and that will really help us down the line. So I'll go back to one view, because we know that they're in 3D space. And all I'm going to do, just because they do look a little bit pixelated from time to time, I'm just going to click that raster and it just make them all pin sharp because they're vector. So I'm gonna add a camera in now. Uh, so to add a camera, you can right click, do new and then camera. Uh, we do want it as a one node camera. Um, a lot of these will be pretty standard. You wanna make sure you've enabled the depth of field because that will add natural, uh, natural depth of field, which I'll show you in a second. Um, and the F stop we can change. So I'm just gonna press okay and then to have our parallax effect, what I'm gonna do is on the position, I'm just gonna add a wiggle effect. So, uh, sorry, a wiggle expression. So I've pressed option on my keyboard and clicked on my little stopwatch and that's opened up my expression window. And all I'm gonna type out is wiggle bracket and I'm gonna do uh, 0.5 comma, let's do 75 and let's see what that looks like. So now basically all that's doing, that's moving the camera around Every two seconds, it should move 75 pixels. So I'll just fast forward that because it was taking a little while on my machine. But you can see now the camera's moving slightly and it's making everything feel like it's got depth to it. Everything's moving at a slight different speed. And there's not even any keyframes on this animation. It's all just one expression, but all the buildings are moving, so it looks really nice. So I can see a few little issues that have happened to so this little building here. I can see a bit of white space. Um, so I can fix that by just either scaling up or moving it down. But what I want to show you first is how to get, because um, it's all still looking quite like flat, there's no, so there's depth in the movement, but there's not really like depth in the visual. So I'm going to add um, depth of field to it using the camera. So I'm just going to stop it around here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop down my camera options layer. So we've got depth of field on by just there, it's on. Um, but what I want to do is just check our focal distance. So if I go back into my two view here, you can see there's these, these two pink lines at the end. So if I zoom out a little bit, this is my camera I've got selected. Um, so the first dark pink line, I believe, is your zoom, yep. Yeah? So that's how zoomed in the camera looks. Um, so I'm just going to leave that where it was. But my focal distance is my second pink line here. And what I want to do is work out what building I want to be in focus. So I think because it's central and it's like in the middle of all the buildings, I'm, I'm going to want this one to be in focus the most. So I can see I've clicked it and it's highlighted here on my top view. So what I'm going to do is drag my focal distance so it's pretty much lined up on top of that building there. So now when I um, increase my blur, so, oops, sorry, I'll put that to 100. Um, so when I increase my blur, you'll see that's in focus and the buildings that are further away will be more out of focus the further away they are. So my aperture is going to do that. So if I increase my aperture to 100, you'll start to see more and more. Let me go to 200. 
you'll start to see the blur happening. So these are starting to look out of focus already. So I'm going to go higher, 300. Let's go even higher, 500. There we go, you can see it's starting to happen now. So these front buildings that are closer to the camera are starting to get really out of focus. Then that one's less and less out of focus than this one, which the one we're focused on is really pin sharp. And the rest again, again, more and more. So I might just go a little bit higher just to exaggerate the blur. There we go. So now when I press, uh, I can go back to my one view because we don't need to look at the top view anymore. And I press space to review it. There we go. You can see it's got the depth on this, on the, on the blur on the buildings. And the one they want to focus on really draws your attention into it. And then all I did on my example was I just moved the camera from left to right and just put a few more buildings in to make it feel like it was panning through a city scene. So what I want to do, I want to basically move the camera from left to right to make it feel like it's panning through a city. And I'd naturally do that by wanting to separate my dimensions here, but because it's got a wiggle on the camera, I, I can't really do that because I'd have to wiggle everything. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to right click and add a null. And then I'm going to parent my camera to my null. And if I right click on position here, I can separate my dimensions and keyframe my X axis. So oh, zero frames, I'm going to minus 2000. And then uh, a, I'm going to add 2000. And then in the middle is at 960. So I'm going to select all those Easy is them by clicking Fn and F9. And I'm going to open the graph editor. So if you click this, you can see what's happening here. So what I want to do, I want it to start off really fast, go super slow, but not stop, and then go really fast towards the end. So it feels like it's got energy to the movement. So what I'm going to do, basically, this line here is the movement and speed of your camera. And the flatter it is, the slower it'll move, and the steeper it is, the quicker it'll move. So if I drag this handle here down like so, drag it all the way down, something like that, and drag this handle here up. So like I say, the steepness, so the steeper this line is vertical, the quicker the camera will go, and the flatter it is, the slower it'll go. So that's still going to cause this to stop because this is going to straighten out. So all I want to do is just add a slight up and down to these ones. So it still looks fairly flat, but it'll mean it's going to go quick at the beginning. So you've got that energy then. So even then, before it's even properly previewed, I can see it had that quick energy. And it's really slowed down here. So it's still moving from left to right. You can see it's still panning across. Stop there for a slight second. And then now it's starting to move again. And as the speed graph goes taller, it's going to start moving faster. There we go, energy, energy, energy. Stopped, still moving slightly. Stopped quite a bit though. And then fast energy again. So that, that'll do, that's that's kind of what we're after. You can spend loads of time tweaking it. And there's things that are wrong with it. Like I can see there's like white space under the building there. So whether or not we make the building taller or scale it or put something else down there to hide it. Um, but then all I did was to hide my cut is I did create a new shape layer and double clicked my rectangle tool to make what I would class as a foreground building. So all I'm gonna do is make this a 3D layer, bring it to my foreground and put it really close to the camera. So maybe 1,200, minus 1,200. So it's super close. And then all I'm gonna do is at the minute is just drag it so it's in front of the camera on the x-axis. So then the camera will pass that really quickly and then get to the end. And I'm just going to duplicate this and put it on full screen next to the camera again. So I'm going to try and grab that X tab, X arrow like so. So then as it moves through, we can still see there's gaps here. So I might, what I might have to do is just duplicate a few of my foregrounds up and move them across to try and fill that white space, which has happened there. And then I probably need to do another one here. Yeah, a little bit of white space here. So I'm just gonna grab a different building, move that across like so. To make that feel different, I'm just gonna flip 
the scale so he's pointing the other way. And maybe drop it down a bit. And then again, what we could do is just do the same in the background with these buildings, just to fill this space. You want to try and add a little bit like randomness to it. So whether or not you bring that closer to the camera and drop it down a bit. We're just trying to fill the space, that's all. That can maybe go there. So then as I move, get that. probably want something else, might move that one. So again, all I'm doing here is just eyeballing, moving around, playing around with stuff to try and fill this space to make it look like it's not an empty city, to make it look like it's quite populated. There we go, fill in the white space. And then there's a big chunk of white space here I want to fill. What I'm going to do with this building, because I need to leave it where it is, because that's my focus. I'm going to scale it up and just bring it down a bit so we don't see that white space. Uh, I'm going to grab that building again, move it over here. I'm going to make it rather large. Put it down here. Maybe bring that back so it's blurry. There we go. So that's getting further away from the camera. Let's have a look towards the end. I might just add, not the foreground, might just add this one. Just again in here, just to fill the gap. But I probably want to put it back in my Z space. There, and maybe scale it up a bit. What I'll do, I'll scale it up and put it behind that building there so it looks different. There we go. So now when I press play, it looks like it's panning through a city. And there you have it, all of that just with two keyframes and a little expression. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you got something from it. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. But if not, I'll see you in a tutorial soon.